In example two, we're going to rewrite each of the following sets using a different notation. So in A, we have the interval notation, negative 112 to 57. This means we're going from negative 112, because it's a square bracket, we're less than or equal to our variable, which I'll pick to be x. And this is going to be less than 57, because it's a rounded bracket, we do not stick any of that equal sign underneath. For part b, x is greater than 2, such that x is an element of the natural numbers. Okay, this means we start with the first number greater than 2, which is 3, and x is greater than 3, so we're going to just continue counting up. And that is our set of numbers. All right, part c, x is greater than 2. Well, this means that we're going to go from 2 to positive infinity, and we're not going to include 2 or infinity in that set. D, we're going from 13 to infinity. So we know that x is going to be greater than 13 and less than infinity. We have two rounded parentheses, so we do not put any equal signs underneath. Part E, we have y is less than or equal to 103. This means y, the values for y will be from negative infinity to 103. We do not include infinity, so we use a rounded parentheses. But we do include 103, so we use that square bracket. And lastly, we want all the values of a, such that a is a real number. So there's a number of ways we could write this. We could say we're going to use all the numbers. We could just write the reals. We could also say that a is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity which we could also express with an inequality of negative infinity is less than a is less than infinity. So these are different ways that you can express the exact same thing. There might be a couple times I do want you to use interval notation, but after you move past this section, for the most part, you can choose what way you express an interval. Which brings us to our last topic of union and intersection. All right, so when we're looking at union and intersection, it means we're looking at multiple sets at once. The union is all the elements in all the sets that we're looking at. So all the elements added together. The intersection is looking at only the overlapping elements. And this is going to be best understood if we look at an example. So let's look at an example through here. We want to determine the union and intersection sets below for, oh, below, given the following sets. So you're given four finite sets here. You're given A, which is negative 4, negative 2.5, 0, 1, 3, and 31 fourths. B is the empty set, it has no elements. C is the set negative 16, negative 5 halves, 3, 21, 154. And D is the set of negative 4, 0, and 25. So if we're looking at the union, oh yes, make sure you know this notation. For union, we use what looks like an uppercase U. For intersection, we look at the upside down version of that uppercase U kind of looks like an n. So here we're looking at the union of a and c. So we're looking at the set of all the elements from both. So we'll take negative 16, we'll take negative 4, we'll realize that negative 5 halves and negative 2.5 are the same, so we can express them either way. I'll go ahead and just write it as negative 5 halves. We'll take 0, 1, we get 3 in both sets. 31 fourths is close to the value of 8, 21, and 1, 54. So this is the union of A and C. Now that you've seen one example, try the rest on your own, see if you can figure them out, and then resume the videos when you're ready to check your solutions.